Hi guys, my name is Lisa, and today we're doing a blog on what it's like for females in prison. Because I've noticed that there's a lot, a lot of videos out there on YouTube about what it's like for men in prison, and I'm sure females want to know what it's like too. Um, I'm 30 years old. I went away to prison back in 2011. My original sentence was five years. I did two behind the wall, a year of good time, and two years home on parole. And it is now 2017, and it's a whole new life. So we'll get into what it was like, what my experience before, during, and after. Okay, so not really sure where to start, so I'm just gonna ramble off the top of my head. How about start with processing? Well, it's very different between county and when you go to prison, two completely different things. Um, emotionally, that's a big one. When I first went to county for the first time, I think I was in denial at first. Um, the processing part of it, I thought I was gonna get out, you know, not really be there for very long. Um, it's degrading, to say the least. Definitely degrading. The process going into state prison, it's emotionally, you're already set up for it. You've heard a lot of stories of what you're looking, you know, what you're looking, what you're getting yourself into. And so emotionally, you know, going into state prison, you've already been locked up for a while. You kind of know what to expect. Um, Oh, that's really it as far as processing goes, but we'll get into more of that later. First night in prison. Um, Nerve-wracking to say the least, you don't really know what to expect. Again, you know, I was in the county for nine months beforehand, I heard a lot of stories. I was in county with a lot of people who had either done time, a lot of time before, or a short bid. You get a lot of different stories, you get a lot of mixed stories, a lot of rumors, a lot of gossip, just like anywhere else in the workplace or anything when there's a lot of women together. I went to the only women's prison in uh, Clinton, it's called, it's actually Edna Mayhem. Forgot what town it is in New Jersey, but it's the only women's prison. The process going down there is at first you're in reception for anywhere between two and three weeks, and that's where they process you and they figure out, you know, what exactly the extent or like, um, what's the word for it? Like how serious your crime was. If it was a violent crime or, you know, petty things, it all depends. If you killed somebody, you go to the max unit, you don't see daylight. Um, thank God my crime wasn't anything of that sort, so I did go to grounds, but it was one hell of an experience. My first night I went to reception. It's a big gymnasium. Don't remember how many beds exactly, or I should say bunks, but um, probably about 50 bunks. A lot of women in one big space. You shower together, which is humiliating, degrading. Not fun, but you get used to it. That becomes part of your life, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so the first night was just getting classified, which again means whether you're gonna go to the max unit, or if you're gonna go, which they call up top, or if you're gonna go down on grounds. There's a lot more movement, meaning you could take a lot of classes, you can go on walks, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that was my first night. There's a lot of paperwork basically. Um, <laughs> no, reception. You get to reception when you first get up there and you're there for two or three weeks. It depends when they could um, get you classified and get a bed for you. At first you have to go to the max unit regardless of what your charges are because they still have to make room for you. Everybody pretty much has to do that, unless you're the lucky few and you get to go right to grounds. The max unit is where you have to really cover your ass and mind your fucking business, because if you don't, you'll end up, you know, in a lot of fights. There's a lot of jealousy up there. People, women up there, they're doing 20 plus years, and they see you with a five-year bid, and they're gonna fuck you up when you're sleeping just to get you more time, you know? It's pretty crazy. I was definitely sheltered growing up, uh, in my teenage years, I chose the street life because I thought I was cool back then, but it definitely kind of helped um, being in a prison setting because you knew just to shut your mouth. You heard anything, saw anything, 
just be quiet and you're fine. Mind your business. The first fight that I got into up there, um, can't say I was really scared because I expected it. Uh, being in the county for nine months, the place is dirty. Uh, my face broke out really, really, really bad. And it was embarrassing for me as a woman, whatever, dealing with everything else, emotional. So one night we're laying in bed and in the max unit, it's just like a dorm with a bunch of bunk beds. And there's several different dorms. It's not how it was in reception where there's like 50 plus women together. I think it was about eight or 10 women in a dorm. So whatever, I get down there and I get a top bunk with another female and she just didn't like me from the jump. They never do. Um, I remember her name too. I don't know if I want to say it, but anyway, she has some, you know, whatever, street name. She didn't like me. She didn't like my hair. She said that my hair felt like spider webs and I better make sure I sweep my hair up every morning or she was gonna fuck me up. Real petty shit. So whatever, I just ignored it. It was annoying, it was frustrating. Um, the one good thing I could say, I ended up going to prison at the same time as another female that I was in the county with for months and me and her were like best friends and that was cool. We weren't in the same dorm but we were up top together and that was good. So I, you know, I would cry to her because you can't be, you know, you can't show emotions or anything when you're in the maximum facility, you have to be tough. But I would cry to her and let her know what was going on. It was like right before Christmas too, how depressing. So the other girl was on the other end of our unit and it's late at night, 10 o'clock, lights off. And my bunkie and another girl across the room, they were going at each other, making fun of each other's bunkies. Me and another female, the other woman that was in there for killing her husband or something. So they started making fun of each other's bunkies. And the girl was like, oh yeah, well your bunkie looks like she got her face uh, messed up by Freddy Krueger or something like that, whatever. So I just ignored it for a good 20 minutes. And then when she said that, I just broke. And I was dealing with the bullshit and the emotions. I couldn't take it anymore. So I said something to her, something that really hit home. I never want to hurt people, but I knew how to hurt her. In that moment, she was hurting me. And it wasn't just that, it was deeper than that for, for all of us, you know? It's, it's deep, much deeper. And whatever, that's her outlet, you know? She's trying to take the focus off her own situation by hurting other people's feelings. But anyway, so I said to her, I said, well, that's why I get to go home in a couple months and you'll never see your kids again. And that hit a soft spot for her. She jumped off her bunk, came to my side, she spit at me, I jumped off my bunk, we had words, we had hands, and all of a sudden then we heard the CEOs running in, so she ran back to her side, I jumped up on my bunk real quick. Somehow the CEOs pulled me out of the room, out of, out of everybody, and they're like, you, right now, da 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 da. And my heart was beating. Everybody from the other units are outside looking, watching, seeing what's going on. The CO said to me, did she put her hands on you? And I said, no, we just had words with each other because I knew if I ratted, I'm gonna have problems my entire bid. And besides that, like I'm not a rat, there was no reason really to rat. I could have got her in trouble, had her taken out of the unit, but it's really petty, really petty. So, um, yeah, so then they called, they, put me back in the room, they called her out, and my bunkie said to me, I know you ratted on her, I know you told them that she put her hands on you. I said, I didn't say shit. And I got back on my bunk. The other girl came back in, and the CEOs were like, I don't wanna hear anything else the rest of the night. And that was kind of the end of it. And then my bunkie said to me, well, I have respect for you now. So if you have a problem, you come to me. And she was a pretty big name around the unit, so I knew I had protection, and that's kind of, you got to work your way into that, you know, you got to find people that have a reputation um, in case you ever run into any problems. A lot of my going to prison had to do with drug addiction, um, something that I battled for many, many years. And um, through my time, whether it be the county or when I got to prison or even after prison, like I chose Know, anything recovery based to work on myself like you can go down there and either you're gonna become a better criminal or you become a better person and I knew in my heart I wanted to become you know 
I wouldn't say become a better person, just the person that I always was that um, I hindered myself from becoming because of drugs and the street life. It was a little different once I got to grounds. I mean, I still interacted with the same people, but like when you get down there, you can have jobs. Like people have jobs in the kitchen or doing the trash or like, you know, yard work, stuff like that. Sometimes you can even leave the premises to go clean highways and stuff. Yes, that's a real thing. I always wondered that growing up, like if it was really prisoners on the street cleaning garbage. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, you can become a flagger too. They have a lot of, they have a lot of things down there. It's kind of crazy. You would think um, when I tell people that it was the best experience of my life, they look at me like I'm crazy but that's because I chose to make it the best experience. I took all sorts of classes that they had down there. <clears throat> I chose to be in the recovery program, which I graduated from. I um, was head of house, actually. Accomplishments, right? Accomplishments in prison. Like, hi, mom, I accomplished head of house in prison. You should be proud. You know, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I never really had any other issues down there. Um, one of the things that the sheriffs said to me, a female officer, when she was driving me from the county to prison, she said to me, the only thing you need to do down there and you'll be fine is don't get a girlfriend because everybody down there is gay for the stay and straight at the gate. Except maybe like five people and I was one of them. Um, yeah, you'll go, it's a whole new world. It's like a bubble. Like there's females that like wear like, they look like the men on the streets, dreads. You know, they open their mouth, they sound like a man. It's fucking crazy. So I'm sure you guys are wondering if being a lesbian down there is frowned upon. And, um, I mean, you're not supposed to have any sexual relations down there. And if you get caught, you will get in trouble. Uh, depending on how severe it is. Um, you can get sent up top, you can get write-ups, like if you got caught having sex with a female, you'll get a write-up and you'll probably go do like a week or two in lock-up. Um, yes, a lot of people had girlfriends down there, a lot. Um, I'm friends on, or friends on Facebook with a lot of the women that I was away with and some of them really are bisexual or just gay, you know? I'm um, just like out here in the real world, but I, I, I personally felt like a lot of them just did it because, you know, you're bored, everybody wants, you know, everybody wants a connection with somebody, especially when you're in that situation. Somebody to connect with, somebody to talk with, and people need to get the rocks off, you know, so <laughs> however you could do it, you do it. Um, I personally had a situation, there was a female who was in love with me, and, you know, we were just friends or whatever, I couldn't get down with that, but, you know, they'll give you their whole commissary if, you know, a lot of girls did shit like that. Like, they'll just be with somebody because they don't have anything. It causes a big problem with a lot of jealousy, a lot of jealousy, a lot of fights, a lot of females dating two or three girls and they just, like, rotate them. It's crazy. It's really fucking crazy. But that's why I say, like um, I had said before, um, gay for the stay, straight at the gate, because some of them go home and they're right back to their man, you know? Whether you could be married, single, divorced, whatever, like anything flies down there. So, yeah. Um, I didn't really witness anything too violent. I think, honestly, I witnessed more violence in the county. Um, yeah, shit was really crazy in the county. I remember there was two girls that they were beefing for a while and they all dead ass the COs just let them fight. Like they were standing at the bottom and everybody's like, go get her, go get her. She's like, nah, let them fight. Because I think the CO kind of knew like what an asshole the other inmate was or whatever. And she let that shit slide. They let them rock out for a good five minutes throwing punches at each other. And finally they took out the pepper spray and that shit sucks. That pepper spray, you choke even if you're like, two miles away, that shit really sucks. Yeah, I remember hearing once that there was a stabbing up top, but we don't know if it was a rumor or whatever, but um, normally when things happen like that, we'd all get shut down, like the whole facility would get shut down, like you're locked down, nobody moves, you know, no movement or anything, like 
usually we go on walks or you know stuff like that and that was taken away from us if something happened because they had to investigate it, it's not like what you see in the movies i remember i never really got into the show orange is the new black but i remember i just wanted to watch it because i wanted to see if it was accurate on things that happened and somewhat somewhat but the shit that i grew up seeing on tv like absolutely not it was completely different no you're not behind bars literally there are no bars in the women's prison at least the one that I was in, and there's only one in the state of New Jersey. And I'm not gonna find out what one's like in New York or PA, so <laughs> just stick with Jersey. When you get closer to your parole date, people will come for you any way they can. Oh, you stole a honey bun out of my locker. Bitch, no I didn't. <laughs> like, it's just cause you're about to go home and people are gonna start fucking with you. Yeah, I was in the drug program down there, so technically you couldn't have a job because working your program was your job. But they were very short staffed um, with maintenance and with kitchen. So I was there for like four months and they decided that they were gonna let people from the drug program have jobs. You know, at the end of the night when you're not programming anymore, which is usually about six at night we were done with programs, um, so I got myself a job in the kitchen, which is really cool because um, when I was down there, unfortunately, my family, you know, they were in a rough situation. They had my daughter. They were doing a lot just by having my daughter and just by, you know, talking to me was enough for me. Well, they really, you know, my mother couldn't really send me money for commissary or anything. And, if you go down there, you really need to have somebody that can send you a few dollars for the necessities. Shampoo, conditioner, soap, I mean, you will get that stuff, but like the really shitty stuff, and I have like, you know, really knotty hair, so that's stuffed in the county. But anyway, um, you will have friends that'll help you out. You know, there are, I've met some of the most beautiful souls in prison. Some of them, which I have contact with still, you know, um, you're not completely by yourself. So I got myself a job in the kitchen, and I was working in the kitchen for a little bit, and you know, when you're down there, old behaviors, old habits, you know, stealing, a lot of the girls would steal real food from the kitchen. And you know, like they had cereal bars, or like some of them were shoving fucking bags of wings down their pants to bring back to the unit and have fucking wing night, you know? <laughs> um, Eventually you get caught, you know, most people do, but it was like, you know, fresh produce, stuff like that. It was really, you know, it's a luxury down there. So if you have the opportunity to get it, of course you're going to get it. And of course you can make money off of it too. I never made money off of it. I just wanted to have it for me and my friends to have it in the unit. I never really sold anything down there. Um, but yeah, eventually I got caught. They did raids all the time. They would tear apart your room. We had a fridge in our unit. They would tear that apart, just random, for no reason. See if anybody's missing their pills, their medication, because people would get high off their Neurotins or their fucking cholesterol meds if they could do it. Girls got high off Benadryl. Anything they get fucked up off of, they would do it. So that's why we always had raids and stuff. And um, they raided the fridge, and I had a brown paper bag with my name on it like a fucking asshole. And when they raided it and they went in the bag and they saw that there was food from the actual kitchen, I was working at the kitchen when this happened and I remember the sergeant came in, called me. As soon as he called me out, I knew right away what I was in trouble for because I hadn't done anything else. And um, he pulls me aside and he has the brown paper bag in his hand. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to lock up. And he goes, what's in this bag? And I sat down and I told him food that I stole from the kitchen. I wasn't even gonna try to lie because I was caught, you know? To make a long story short, they actually, the, the worst thing that happened out of that is that I got fired from the kitchen. And I remember the week before, I was telling you about the wings that girls would shove down their pants. Yeah, one of the girls got caught for doing that. And she got sent to lock up for three weeks. And when I got caught with the food in my unit, I didn't get sent to lock up. They just fired me from the kitchen. And this was maybe a month or two before I was supposed to see parole and go home, hopefully. And yeah, I almost got my ass kicked because of that. Because they all said that 
you know, their homegirl got sent to lock up for stealing food in the kitchen, and here's the little white girl who got caught stealing food and she didn't go to lock up. My situation was a little different. The food was already stolen, it was in the unit. They knew damn well I wasn't the only one. They just happened to search my bag. I didn't physically get caught walking out of the kitchen with food because trust and believe they patted you down, okay? The places this food went when you stole it from the kitchen, not even gonna get into it. <laughs> so um, the other girl like physically got caught with a bag of wings like walking out and I didn't. So I don't know if that helped. Plus, none of my, they look at your charges. They look at how many times you've been in trouble since you've been there. I had never caused any issues. I was in the drug program. I can understand where the other girls are coming from, but it's a lot of hate, too. So yeah, I almost got my ass kicked for that. Everybody hated me. Um, thank God I had really cool people and I had good connections when I was up there that I didn't get my ass beat, but I could have. I had this short little girl, she looked like a boy can't even remember her name, and that's fucked up because me and her are really close. Um, I'm friends with her on Facebook, too. But anyway, me and her are really cool. I think she had a crush on me, and I might have had a little crush on her, too, but I'm not going to discuss that right now. But anyway, so the girl went to hit me, and she, I was ready to fight back, you know, even though I didn't want to. I was getting my parole date, but if somebody's going to hit me, I mean, I'm going to defend myself. But this little white girl, probably about my height, I'm only, I'm not even five foot, um, jumps in front of me and she took the hit from me. But all the CEOs saw it happen and she got in trouble. And um, again, like I didn't get in trouble for it, but I was very hated for that. So happy I made the parole board and I got to go home because who knows what would have happened if I would have stayed any longer. But that's the shit that goes on down there. Well, I'm not religious. I was brought up Catholic and I never, Catholicism and Christianity are so different and I only learned Christianity when I was in the county. And I know they say like, you know, they're like holy rollers or whatever. Um, I'm always gonna be true to myself. I have a relationship with God because of my, t like even today, like I didn't just forget about that shit. And um, not that God's gonna save me and I'm gonna pray to God to get me out of a bad situation. No, there were people that were like that and I'm not gonna knock them for that. That just wasn't me, you know, but I, I had a lot of hope and a lot of faith and that something that I have still today that gets me through everyday life and it's really cool. So I know like I might, I'm not trying to glorify it at all, but like I said earlier, like I knew when I went down there, like I'm making the best out of this situation because I wanna come home and do the right thing. You know, so I kind of did have, it was a learning experience, you know, like it really was. I mean, I know that sounds good. A lot of people think I'm crazy when I say that, but it really, really was like a good, I want to say the best experience of my life, but it was a learning experience, it really was. Okay, so in prison, yes, I am sure that drugs do come into the prison, however, I was in the drug program and you're kind of sheltered from all of that. Um, so I don't know. Like when I started working in the kitchen, I remember, in fact, the little boy that, you know, had a crush on me. Um, I remember she was having somebody send her Suboxone. I'm sure you all know what Suboxone is. It's a film when it's wet, it's sticky. I always thought Suboxone was dumb. It's supposed to get you off of opiates but whatever, people take it to get high, anyway. Um, and how they do it is they'll have like somebody like color a picture and Suboxone's orange, so they'll, they'll color some like a teddy bear and you colored shirt orange and then you have the Suboxone sticky, like you, you know, lick it a little bit and then it's able to stick on the paper and they'd have it sent that way. I ended up getting fired and kicked out of the dorm because there was a whole big rumor that there was a lot of drug dealing going on. And um, what had happened is we had this one lady come into the medical unit and I was serving food trays. So I had to bring them their trays after I served everybody else. And there was a woman in there and I had this kind of, I don't want to justify it because it's wrong, but I had absolutely no commissary and I needed to make a little bit of money. So this one lady, she was you know, not doing too good. She was detoxing off of drugs and she was a crackhead and she had some crack. <laughs> 
And she said, can you sell this in general population? And my dumb ass was like, ooh, I was hesitant, but I'm like, how the fuck am I gonna get caught, you know? So I did, I took the bag of crack and I went into the unit and I talked to who I knew I needed to talk to and I got it off and a couple hours later in the middle of the night, they're ripping us out of bed because there's a bunch of snitch bitches. <laughs> they're ripping us out of bed and they're you know trashing, trashing our shit and they're lining us up and you know, um, anybody in the dorm, actually everybody, one by one, at about two o'clock in the morning had to go in the bathroom, bend, squat, cough, the whole deal. Very embarrassing. But I mean, at that point, you're used to it, so it's just, it's like second nature, you know? Um, it's like waking up and brushing your teeth every morning, and just bend over and squat for the CO. But anyway, so yeah, we all got searched that night. The following day, they had like this task force come in and we all had to go to the gym and they're right, putting the scanner over our hands and supposedly it would see if you had any drug residue on your hands and thank God I never chose to do the drug. I just wanted to get some money for it. I didn't have any residue on my hands. And they drug tested anybody that they thought was involved. So how did they know who to take out? Like I said, there was a snitch. There always is. and. Um, a couple of people, a lot of people went down. It wasn't just me who was, you know, doing shit like that. There was other people, but a lot of people went down. People had dope and heroin in their system. People had weed in their system, believe it or not. And people had coke in their system because of the crack. And um, yeah, they drug tested all of us the next day. They didn't, weren't wasting any time on that. A lot of people went to lock. I didn't, because like I said, I didn't use it. And um, Thank God, because lock in the county is like you're locked up in a cell for three weeks and you don't come out except, I think it's two or three times a week for a shower. That's it. Um, so yeah, like I said, as far as drugs, I'm sure there was a lot going on in the prison. It's prison, but I didn't really see much of it. I saw more of that going on in county jail. There was another situation in the county where Heroin was being passed off. You know, like I said, it goes on there. Rape in prison. Wanna hear some crazy shit? Cause I got stories on this. There wasn't rape necessarily between the inmates. How about <laughs> let's incriminate some COs? And it's not a secret. I'm not scared to talk about it because actually if you look on the computer right now, there is a lot of cases going on with a lot of the male COs that would have sexual relations um, with female inmates. And yes, this is true. This shit goes on. Um, even in my unit, <laughs> I really don't want to get anybody in trouble here, <laughs> but there was an old man, he was a CO, and he was a lot older. He had to be in his 70s. And the girls would flirt, because, okay, you have to understand, a lot of the girls that are down there for drug crimes, a lot of them are back page, stuff like that. You know, they did whatever, and I'm, I, I'm not knocking anybody's hustle, all right? Um, I was very sheltered as a kid, thank God. But, um, yeah, a lot of the girls, I mean, they're used to doing it on the street. They'll do whatever they want to do for their drugs, money, you know, whatever. So the girls would, like, flash I, this one CO. They would flash him to make sure that they got cigarettes at the end of his shift. Because when I first got down there, you could still smoke cigarettes, but I think it was a couple months, I think it was like a month or two later, they were already in the process of ending smoking in any state facility. So, um, yeah, that really sucked. Take away everything, why don't you? I mean, fuck, they take away your fucking, anyway. But, um, yeah, this one CEO, he would leave like half a cigarette, he would throw it, you know, to make it not look obvious and whoever got it in the morning would get it and it was usually me and this other girl and we'd share it. But there was a couple girls that would come down the long stairwell which faced his little pod where he sat and they'd flash him. And you know, he, his dick got hard and he gave him a couple cigarettes, you know, that was their hustle. But again, right now there is a lot of cases going on. Um, with the COs, the male COs, and relations with female inmates. It's really crazy. It's fucked up. I mean, anything goes. Anything. There is a lot to do downstate if you choose to. You can choose to do nothing, or you could choose to, you know, occupy your time, which is the best thing to do. 
Um, I took a lot of programs. I didn't take all that were available, but I did take many. I got Serve Safe certified, which is you pretty much take, I'm sure a lot of you know about it, but in case you don't, Serve Safe is basically just knowing, you know, temperatures of meat, safety in the kitchen, you know, learning about cross contamination, da 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 da. da. If you were to take a Serve Safe certified course out here, it would cost you about 160 bucks on the street. I got that shit for free. So that's really cool. Um, again, they have a flagging. Uh, course that you can take and <laughs> that could be a union job you get that certification for free they had women's programs um, they did it one weekend I mean we don't sleep there or anything but we went to one of the classrooms on a Saturday and a Sunday for a couple hours each day and you just bond with women and um, I forgot what it was called, something against violence. And it was just bringing women together, you know, because there's so much cattiness and so much hate. And the whole weekend was just bringing you together. There was different activities. We, you know, did all kinds of crazy things just to get to know each other. It was awesome, an awesome, awesome experience. Made a lot of friends through that. Takes your mind off of your situation. Um, there's all kinds of courses. A lot of people went to school down there. A lot of people got their GED, you know. Um, yeah, if you take advantage of what they're offering down there, you can, you know, do a lot of things when you come out, you know, but it's all up to you. You know, some people could care less. They're just waiting to get out so they can do, go commit their next crime or, you know, just do what they were doing when they're out on the street. Uh, the job program that I was in was awesome. It was a nine month program. You move, you know, you go, from the bottom position, you just move, keep moving higher up, higher up, higher up. The way it was set up there is they had um, on the bottom level was kind of like a dorm and there was four bunk beds, so eight women. And then upstairs, there was really small rooms, like a little bit bigger than a closet, enough to fit a bunk bed and two trunks and a locker to put your clothes in. And that, you know, you bunk up or whatever. But if you moved up to head a house, you got your own room. And with your own room comes your own TV. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And free TV, by the way. They do sell TVs on commissary, too. But um, I didn't have to pay for mine. It was just in the room that I got when I became head of house. So, um, yeah, that's how that worked. If I could give you three pieces of advice, for a woman that's about to serve time and a woman in a state uh, facility in prison, I would give you, the first one would be what the sheriff said to me on my way down there, don't get a girlfriend. No matter what, stay focused on you. Do not get a girlfriend, you're asking for problems. She has fucked every other female there, I guarantee you, just don't do it. Make really, you know, have good bonds with females and just keep it strictly at that. Um, my second word of advice is make the best out of your situation. Do as much as you can down there. Take as many classes, get into as many programs. If you don't have your GED, get it. You will feel so much better about yourself. You'll feel so accomplished. You could do so much with your certifications once you get out. And my third piece of advice, is mind your business. And that probably should have been the first, actually, because that's really important. Mind your business. If it doesn't involve you, if it doesn't affect you in any way, stay out of it. Keep your mouth shut. Avoid problems, avoid fights that way. You know, you wanna make your bid as easy as possible. And that's really it. That's the key to it all. Hey, again, my name is Lisa. And this was just a brief history of my life and what I experienced in a woman's prison. And if you want to find out more and what exactly I did to get there, you'll have to tune in next time.